mid-1920s, aviation was critical to economic development. And if Columbus wanted to grow as a community, it, one of the linchpins of that growth was aviation, and obviously you can't have aviation without an airport. My grandfather, uh, Don Casto, uh, was very interested in aviation. Uh, he was a, an ambulance driver, survived the war, fortunately, and came back, and his heroes were the uh, World War I pilots. Lindbergh was a tremendous influence on everybody. When he flew the Atlantic, aviation just took off. Everybody was wild. Part of the powerhouse DNA of Don Castro Sr. involves Port Columbus. He had been to all of these seaport airports. He didn't want it to be another Columbus Municipal Airport or anything like that. He wanted something dramatic and he came up with the name of Port Columbus because he had been to all these other places. So in 1927, uh, he worked with his, his friend Edgar Wolfe, who published the Columbus Dispatch, to get a bond issue passed uh, to purchase the land uh, for what is now Port Columbus. Mr. Casto and Wolfe were proponents for building Port Columbus to be a part of the transcontinental air transport train plane service to the west coast. They had a bond issue in 1927 to build the airport in 28, but it failed. During that period of time, they tried to get the, the community ready to do another bond issue the next year. And in 1928, uh, they put the, the bond issue on the ballot again uh, and needed some way to publicize the bond issue, get people interested in it, as to what's happening. And my grandfather came up with the idea of, gee, uh, uh, the graph dirigible. The graph dirigible is gonna make its maiden voyage uh, across the uh, Atlantic. And wouldn't it be great if I could be on that as a passenger? In the process, he would write back or wire back to Mr. Wolf, who then would publish his trip to Europe on this Zeppelin, which is quite a thing. They took off from Lakers, New Jersey, and flew to Friedrichshafen, Germany, in the very southern part of, of Bavaria. Uh, but the trip took them about 10 days. The, the Graf Zeppelin was underpowered, uh, and the winds blew it up way over North Greenland, and then it blew it way back down to Morocco, and then they had to motor up over uh, North Africa, across the Mediterranean into Friedrichshafen. So it was a little bit of a, an adventure. By the time they got back, they had convinced the people of Columbus that they would do the bond issue. Well, he was cabling home dispatches. Mr. Wolf was publishing the dispatches, and the bond issue, in his absence, passed. So. That was the genesis of, of the, the funding for uh, Port Columbus. 